Pew, 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 pew. What is up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Saturday Weapon Ray. Today, we are talking about a gun that's very special to me because this was my very first gun that I ever bought. Yes, I bought an AR-15 for my first gun. Uh, some people might think it's a bit ridiculous, but if you haven't shot an AR-15, then you wouldn't know why I bought an AR-15. AR-15s are badass weapons, super easy to shoot. You can do a lot of things to them. So I wanted uh, I wanted to have that option for my, for my first gun. So this gun is an LWRC M6 IC SPR. So IC stands for individual carbine and SBR is special purpose rifle. Okay. <clears throat> it's very nice. This gun is quite expensive and we'll go into uh, why it's so expensive, but this thing is awesome. Uh, LWRC, that is a, an American company. I think they're out of Massachusetts. Uh, I forget what it stands for. Land Warfare and Research Corporation, something like that. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm going to approach this the same way I've been doing some other things is I'm going to do a pros, a cons, and then how I have this set up personally for me. All right, so let's let's get right into it. So the pros, so the machining is absolutely phenomenal. The machining on this gun is great. Um, they use really, really good materials. The Cerakoting here, the finish that they have, this is their flat dark earth. This is a re really, really durable material. I've scratched it before and, you know, I put this through a lot and it, it's kind of hard to scratch some of this finish off, really. I mean, really, it, it takes like metal on metal to really scratch this off. I've got a little scrapes, some scrapes down here. You might not even be able to see that, but that's from metal on metal uh, contact. But the finish is really nice. You do have a fluted barrel. So you can see this little pattern within the barrel here. Uh, the reason they flute it is one, to create uh, more surface area so the barrel cools down, but it's also to save weight too. So they're shaving off just some extra material that they don't need. So that's why they did that. This barrel is also cold hammer forged, which is really nice. Uh, it's just a more accurate uh, process. Um, you know, when it comes to machining certain things, my, uh, at about a hundred yards, depending on the ammo, uh, I'm looking at about a two MOA, um, uh, shot group with this gun. And I think it's partly because of, and probably mainly because of the machining and the barrel, the barrel's just really nice. This does have a fixed, uh, gas block system. So, you could look at that uh, pros or cons. So pro, it's gonna be very, very reliable. I have over 5,000 rounds through this gun and I have not had a single malfunction because of the weapon. I think I maybe had one or two failure to feeds, uh, but it was the magazine and that magazine is no longer with us. So um, other than that, this gun is running fine. I've run, I've run tons of different rounds through this. I've run steel, I've run brass. Um, I've run um, green tip, all that kind of stuff. And this thing will just chew through anything. And so that's really nice. Uh, the fixed gas block though, the, the con that might be part of that is that it's probably not gonna be optimized for suppressor or suppressor use. You can run a suppressor on this gun, but because you can't adjust the the gas, you might have a little bit extra blowback. You might put a little bit more pressure on the gun because you can't adjust that. So be aware, if you do the, get this gun, it might not be the best to suppress. I think they have a, um, I think their IC-E is gonna be more, uh, more suppressor compatible and suppressor friendly. So if you're looking to suppress a weapon, maybe look into that if you're gonna go through LWRC. Uh, they do have a free floating handguard, which is really nice. A lot of ports here for cooling. Uh, when you look at their upper receiver here, a lot of times the Picatinny rail is actually uh, a, sec a separate piece from the rest of the upper, upper receiver. 
This is all one machine piece, which is just gonna make everything more durable, right? So the less pieces you have to put together, the more reliable it's gonna be. Uh, it's definitely gonna be better when it comes to holding a zero. This gun also comes with nice uh, iron sights here. They're a little bulky, uh, but they're really good iron sights. They're aluminum and uh, they fold down, which is nice. The, the rear one is, is back here underneath this optic, which we'll talk about in a little bit. It's completely ambi, so you, you've got mag release, uh, bolt catch, bolt release, and trigger controls on both sides here. And just for my range officers, empty mag, empty gun, okay? Empty mag. All right. Uh, speaking of mag, the, the magwell is nice. It's... Uh, it's flared just a little bit, um, which again, it, I don't really need a really flared magazine. I think if you just practice enough, uh, even a, even a tighter fit mag like an uh, MP5 magwell, will you know you'll be able to get used to it. But it is flared ever so slightly, which does help. The trigger is also nice, you know, uh, because this gun was, you know, cost what it costs. You would expect a, a, at least a decent trigger and this is a good trigger so this trigger i would say is about five pounds maybe five and a half pounds so we're going to ghost it right here so there's almost no take up that's the take up right there i'm going to try to bring this up so that's the take up right there okay right there very distinct wall and then that's the break and then here's the reset Pretty short reset, very tactile, very audible. Yeah, that's about uh, five and a half pounds. So that's a nice trigger right there. I, uh, it's not as good as the Geissele trigger, but it is very nice. It's a, one of the better triggers that you're probably gonna get on an AR-15. Moving back, the pistol grip is really nice. It doesn't have texture on either side, um, right or left, but on the front and back, it is kind of ribbed, has this protection here, or uh, this grip here. And then it's pretty tacky. I don't have a problem with this. I've shot this uh, in the rain and this grip holds up nicely. Moving back, it does have a six position adjustable stock right here. Uh, Stock's pretty average. It's got a decent amount of padding here. I would say a quarter inch, maybe a third of an inch. And then again, a six position, which is nice. But other than that, it's it's a pretty basic stock. All right, uh, let's go to some cons. There's not many, but this gun isn't perfect. So I would say the cons right off the bat, this gun is pretty heavy. So out of the box, none of this stuff attached to it, this gun will probably weigh at least a pound, maybe a pound and a half heavier than most AR-15s, and that's just because of the materials used. Uh, you know, so it is a little bit heavier. Um, what else? <clears throat> oh yeah, so they this they have their own proprietary rail system here. So as you can see, it's no, there's not M lock, there's not key mod. They have pick rail up top, but on the sides here, you just see these holes, and so you have to go through them and buy their pick rails with their screws that will fit into these holes. Now I don't know if there's any third market or, or third party um, aftermarket support for these, but. Um, there might be, I'm not sure. So, but if you go to LWRC and they're out of the their pick rails, you're kind of out of luck if you need to add anything. So that kind of sucks because you can really only go through them. Now, granted, I don't think I've ever gone to them and not gotten what I needed, but I may have just been lucky. So if they do run out of anything and they're out of stock of something, unfortunately, because it's proprietary, you really have nowhere else to go. Uh, what else? <clears throat> the charging handle, uh, it's ambidextrous and it's pretty smooth. Uh, it's definitely better than some other AR-15s, but it's not perfect. I would recommend uh, maybe putting a Geissele or maybe a Radian in there. Again, I haven't swapped it out yet um, because I haven't needed it, but 
there are smoother charging handles out there, but it is ambidextrous and it is actually pretty good um, for what it is. Okay, now let's talk about how I have this thing set up. So this is by far my heaviest gun. Fully loaded, this gun weighs probably 11 and a half pounds, which is quite heavy. Um, this is not, although it may look like it, this is not my when shit hits the fan rifle. Um, currently, uh, I actually have uh, something else that I'll review in the later weeks for that. And then I actually am waiting on another gun to be approved by the government. And that gun, once it comes in, that will be my when shit hits the fan do all rifle. Um, but yeah, so this thing's pretty heavy. I wouldn't want to carry this around for too long. I do have a lot of weight up front here. And so while standing unsupported, it can get pretty heavy pretty quick. Um, so if we move up here, I did swap out. It came with just an, their, their version of a, of a uh, birdcage flash hider. I put on a muzzle brake. This is a muzzle brake from Fur Fronds, and this is their blast mitigation device. If I'm shooting outside, I'm not near anybody, I'll take this off because this is several ounces and it can really just add to the weight because it's right on the end of the muzzle there. Uh, but if I'm inside and I'm shooting next to people, I'll throw this on because I don't want to be hitting people with, uh, with those hot gases. That's never a good time for, for anybody. <clears throat> Moving back, I have a Magpul bipod here. This is really nice. I think it's more expensive than it should be. I think this is, I don't know, around $100 or something. Um, I was actually able to get it for a little bit cheaper through Optics Planet because I had some bucks. Uh, and I used a discount code, <clears throat> but just be prepared to spend right around 100 Now, it is pretty nice because there is some yaw and there's some cant to it. So, you know, it's definitely adjustable. You can kind of move it back and forth a little bit. And, and this is all adjustable. So if I didn't want this to rock back and forth, I can tighten that up. If I didn't want to have any sway from side to side, I can tighten that up. Uh, and then the adjustments are just right here. You press that button and it can extend out another eh, three or four inches or so. And then it's pretty easy to put away. And then that's it. Okay. Moving back from there, Streamlight ProTac um, light here. This is a thousand lumen. I've got the pressure pad here. So you've got just the pad itself is momentary on. And then you've got this button up here, which is constant on. Uh, it has the strobe capabilities, okay? And then I have some cable management here just with a Ranger band. If you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen that I have Ranger bands on virtually all of my guns. One for things like cable management and sling management, uh, but also in a life or death situation, you can use this as a tourniquet or these are very flammable, so you can use these to start a fire. Moving back, we have a BCM uh, gunfighter angled foregrip. Now I actually have it angled away from me instead of the angle being over here. And I've noticed that when I'm running it, I like the angle kind of digging into my hands. If it was digging the, if it was angled the other way, it's more likely to slip. So that's why I'm running it like that. Now I did modify this. I have a Dremel. So this originally was about this long. And so I took about a half inch off and then I just had a slightly more severe angle uh, pointing uh, forward. And uh, so yeah, just be aware of that. If you go on their website, it's not gonna look exactly like this. Moving back, this is my only dual optic gun. Um, so I've got a six MOA Trichicon RMR on a T-Rex Arms 45 degree mount with a riser. So <clears throat> if you're looking here, Okay, it's offset. I went with T-Rex arms for a couple reasons. Uh, one, it doesn't, it's not canted out as much. Some others cant out a little bit more, which means that I'd have to break off of my normal, um, my normal positioning if I was running this. So I don't really have to move my head as much because it's closer. Uh, and it also sits a little bit tighter to the gun as well. And then it has a riser, which I like, so you could, you know, you could run it another probably quarter inch higher or lower if you wanted that. Uh, so the reason why I have this on is because this Night Force, this it's a, um, 
LVPO, low variable power optic, is a one to eight optic. And it, you can adjust the magnification with this throw level here. Now this is the Night Force NX-8. This is a first focal plane optic. So a first focal plane, what does that mean? Well, when you're looking through the optic, there is a crosshair. And in a first focal plane, on one magnification, that crosshair is very small. And then as you magnify, that, that crosshair will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Second focal plane, it's gonna be the same size crosshair, whether it's one magnification or eight. The reason I went with a first focal plane is because, because the crosshair adjusts with the magnification, if you zero it at 1x, it's going to hold that zero all the way through 8x. Whereas on a second focal plane, it's not going to be a true zero all the way. So if you zero it at 1x, it's not going to be completely zeroed at 3x or 5x or 7x or anything like that. First focal planes are more expensive for that reason. But this is really nice. Uh, the machining is awesome. I like the textured <clears throat> dials here. It has a, uh, a zero stop. So once you zero it, it really can't go beyond that. The glass is super clear. I really like the crosshairs. Once you get used to them, it's it, you know just like anything uh, with something like this, the crosshairs can be a little confusing, but once you get used to it, this is nice. Uh, this gets really bright. There's a bunch of different brightness settings um, over here. So you can actually see this dial here is their brightness settings. And uh, I really like that a lot. Uh, like I said, the glass is clear. The only problem uh, that I do have, and I, you know, I knew this going into it, but because this is so short, the eye relief is pretty poor. You have to be, I would say, within probably an inch and a half, maybe two inches from the back lens here. And then really any movement up, down, left, or right, you're gonna start to get some of that, uh, some of that view out over here uh, obstructed. So that's really the only downside. I knew that going in, but if that's something that is uh, really gonna bother you, I would not go with the NX-8 because the, the eye relief is pretty poor. Um, I have this on a Scalarworks mount here. Uh, this mount is super light, really easy to use. You don't need any tools. So these two dials here, okay, you can adjust with your fingers. So you simply tighten them or loosen them. I just loosen that and you can easily tighten it up and you don't need any uh, you don't need any tools and that usually, even though it's hand tightened, that usually holds tight, uh, very nicely. This also, you won't be able to see it, but this has an auto leveling screw underneath. So once you get this in place, before you get it on your gun, you can auto, that screw will come up and it'll auto level the optic for you. So it's really nice. It does the work for you. And that's why I went with this. This mount is not cheap, but it's holding a very expensive optic. So don't spend $1,500 on an optic and then put it on a $70 mount. That's just my opinion. It's a free country, do whatever you want, but if you're gonna spend that much on an optic, just you know, save up for a couple paychecks and just invest in a, a better mount. I really like Scalarworks. You can get whatever you want, but this one is super nice. Uh, I'm running a Ferro Concept sling here. Uh, I really like these. The pull tab is really easy to adjust. I've got several Ferro Concept slingsters, uh, so I have no complaints with that. All right, guys, I think that's probably about it. Again, this is the LWRC M6 IC SBR. And uh, yeah, my first gun. So if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you like this video, I would appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Share this video with others if you think that they'll find it uh, entertaining and informative. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.